If I sit here with my eyes closed, if someone enters this hall, I will tell you what kind of person has entered this hall. Recently I was in… you know, just four days ago, I was in discussion with uh, one of the top level environmental scientists in this country and uh, we were just talking about it across the dinner, we were just discussing so many things. So he asked, Sadhguru, what are the books that you read? I said, I read A. Strix and Dennis the Menace, that's my <laughs> reading. <laughs> I don't get to read anything because all the time I'm traveling, if I read a newspaper, that's a big deal. Then where do you get all the information? I said, I'm picking it off you. You did all the study, why should I go through it again? I don't open all those books. You're sitting here and I'm picking all the things and I'm talking about it. But where do you get all the technical words? I said, don't you have it in your brain right now? I can pick it off you, whatever I want. I won't go about studying all that nonsense because anyway, the jargon doesn't mean anything to me. You heard of Vivekananda? Hmm? Yes. He's the first yogi who came to this country in 1893 and made a little bit of waves in those days. So he also went to Europe on his way back from United States and happened to be a guest of a German philosopher. And after dinner they met in the study and there was… Uh, they were discussing this and that and uh, there was a large book on his table which was over seven hundred pages. So Vivekananda said, uh, because the man was speaking very highly about the book, he said, can you give me that book for an hour? Let me see what is there in it. That man laughed. He said, in one hour you're going to read this book? I have been reading it for weeks and not getting anywhere because it's so complex. And that too, it's in German language. You don't even know the language. What will you do with it in an hour? Vivekananda said, you give it to me for an hour, let me see. So the book was given to him. He took the book and placed it between his two hands and just sat there with his eyes closed. After one hour, he took the book and gave it to him and said, this doesn't have anything significant in it. <laughs> that man thought, this is the peak of arrogance. You don't even open the book and you make a comment about the book, a book which is in a language that you do not know. So he… F he was a little put off by this and he says, what is this nonsense? Vivekananda said, you ask me anything about the book, I'll tell you. Okay, in page 633, what is there? Verbatim, Vivekananda repeats. You ask any page, just num number the page, he will tell you what is there word by word on every page. Then he asked, how is this? You didn't even open the book, how is this possible? He said, that's why they call me Vivekananda. <laughs> Viveka means perception. His name is Narendra. His guru called him Vivekananda because of his ability to perceive. So he said, that's why I'm called Vivekananda. Human ability to perceive is far beyond just understanding the words Right now I'm speaking, your ability to perceive is actually far beyond just the words that you hear. But because uh, the mind is trained right now, not only to hear and record, desperately trying to remember, note down, you know, some, some of you, the hands are itching, something that you think is valuable has to be written down. <laughs> but human perception goes far beyond this. Because human perception is way beyond that. That's why I'm going on telling you, just be with me, just be with me. If you can simply be with me, your ability to perceive this is far more than writing down every word of what is said. If you have all these words, you still won't know anything. Actually, shall I tell you the secret? Buy yourself an Oxford dictionary. Everything that I say is already there. <laughs> No? 
you just have to arrange it. <laughs> it doesn't get you anywhere that way. So to enhance perception is very important because only what you perceive you know. Rest is all stories and imagination, isn't it? What you perceive and you experientially know, that's all you know. Rest are just empty stories. It doesn't matter how great the story is, it is still an empty story which won't make a difference in your life. If it has to make a difference in your life, it must… there must be an experiential dimension to it. That will happen only if you perceive. So perception of life is not… you cannot all process it through your logical mind. It doesn't work like that because logic will filter out so much of your life without which you cannot live. All yogic processes are essentially about enhancing your perception because it is the profoundness of your perception which brings clarity to every aspect of life. A little bit of work is needed to keep the system at a certain level of alertness. If you put it through a certain few paces, eating right, sitting right, breathing right, doing things right, keeping… The, holding the body right, if you do these things for some time, consciously one or two months, you will see the alertness in the body will come to a status where uh, just anything, if uh, something comes in front of you, simply you can feel it out. How successfully an individual human being can perform a certain action essentially means uh, to what extent uh, your body takes instructions from you, to what extent your thought and emotion cooperates with you, to what extent you can get all your energies focused in one direction, to what extent uh, you can get the situations around you to go with you. But before all this happens, how clearly you see something is the most important thing. If you can't see clearly, but your action is great in the wrong direction, then very successfully we will fail. So the foremost thing is always to develop a certain clarity of perception that uh, if you sit here, you clearly perceive what is the situation around you. If I sit here with my eyes closed, if someone enters this hall, I will tell you what kind of person has entered this hall. If you could sit in your office, if someone enters your ha ha office, if you could know what to expect from the person who comes in front of you without uttering a word, it would be good, isn't it? So much rubbish would be cut out. Whether it's business or personal life or just life, everything will get enhanced if your perception is keen enough